Hello everyone, and welcome to another video. Today we're taking a look at this absolutely ancient GPU, otherwise known as the GTX 570 HD. Back in 2010, this GPU launched for 349 US dollars. While there was a more premium version of this card with 2.5 gigabytes of VRAM, this one only has 1.2 or more closer to 1.3. Now you might be wondering what the HD stands for for this GPU. Well, it's this special port right here, otherwise known as the display port. As far as I'm aware, that's the only difference between the 9HD and the HD version. So yeah, cool to have, I guess. Now as for the installation process, it was just like any other GPU. Absolutely zero issues on my end. Okay, fast. After I got the cables plugged in, I was able to hop on some games and test it out. So the first game I decided to play was a bit of an older title, but it's one that is perfectly suited for this GPU. It's Killing Floor 2 at the medium preset, and for whatever reason it was locked to 60 FPS, I couldn't get it uncapped despite not using VSync or capped frame rate. But regardless, it was rock solid 60 for most of the time, although there was an instance where it dropped performance. And I believe it was when I got close to an enemy, because there's, for some reason old GPUs tend to have this problem where whenever you get close to something it kind of drops. I don't know why that is, but it does seem to be a reoccurring theme. But regardless, absolutely great performance here. I have no issues playing it. I would I would gladly play this game on this GPU for many, many hours. Absolutely playable. I'm literally getting gang banged over here, bro. Now the next game I decided to try was CS2, and this was a much more questionable experience. I, It wasn't quite as consistent as Killing Floor 2, and the, the recording for some reason decided to come out as a laggy, but whatever. In this game, I ran more at like 40 to 80. It's a very, very big variable in that, because if there's more enemies on the screen at the same time, then it just kind of dips. It's it's really not that great. It can technically be playable, but I would highly recommend against it. It's it's really not good for a competitive game like this, and you're going to get mad at the performance. Even using FSR did nothing to the frame rate, which makes those, no sense to me, because like it's, it's a GPU bottleneck, so it should be more impactful in the frame rate, because FSR will put more strain on the CPU, but but I guess when it comes to an old GPU like this, it's just nothing makes sense. Anyways, yeah, don't play this game on the CPU. It's not fun. Play other games, please. <laughs> nice fire right there, you know. Yo! Now, I did attempt to try and launch Resident Evil 4 Remake, but that absolutely did not work, just like the GT730. And the main reason for that is, obviously, the lack of DX12 support. Now, this will be the case for any game that has mandatory DX12 support. Just would not launch at all. Unless there is a specific workaround for that game, it would not work at all. Now, a game that you can absolutely enjoy in this GPU is good old Minecraft. As soon as I open up Minecraft though, I can definitely hear a nice quail whine happening. But other than that, absolutely zero issues with no shaders. Without any shaders, you're getting about 200 to 350 FPS, something like that. But once you turn on shaders, it drops significantly. For fun, I tried some volumetric lighting shaders and that was, eh, terrible, terrible. But if you're okay with no shaders and just playing base Minecraft, Absolutely great experience. You can play a high refresh rate all day. The next game I decided to try was Teardown, and we do not have the DX12 render engine because we don't have DX12 support. So we had to do OpenGL just like the GT730, and yeah, so performance is definitely subpar on this mode. In order to reach an enjoyable, playable experience, I've, I had to drop it to 50% render scale at 1080p, which, to be fair, is not terrible. It could be a lot worse but it is definitely a far cry from any sort of modern GPU. And just like any other system, the game will quickly become CPU bound the more destruction you do, so generally, it's an okay experience. You can have fun with this game. But is it what I would recommend? No, absolutely not. Now this is just a small glimpse of what you can do with the GTX 570. I'm sure there's a lot more games you can play on this GPU, I just really don't have the time to install them and try them out. I also need to get more storage, but regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you enjoyed the inspiration I got from this video. Uh, special thanks to Random Gaming in HD for the inspiration, and yeah, go subscribe to him if you haven't, guys, and see you later. <laughs>